Okay, I think we're alive. I believe so. Today is day uh, 16, is it? I think, yes it is. Day 16. Welcome everyone. Let me just uh, open up the chat, there we go. All right. So hello and welcome everybody, another day where we're working on um, getting VS Code to work, <laughs> where we're working on making game engine in Golang. Um, that's hopefully high performance and something that's usable for actual games. Now, let me add um, thing or workspace. So today, I think it's the time to do something a bit different which is to use our game engine, so to use nmage to build a small game, just to test kind of what we have already before building too many things on top, and see kind of what's missing and maybe how we want to architect some things um, by actually doing it, by actually using it. Because the best way to know if something you're building an API is good is to actually use it. Um, until now, we have not really used it a little bit. Um, so I want to get a real use case. So what I was thinking is we'll do um, a Flappy Bird clone, you know, something like that using NMage. So I have, as you can see, completely um, empty uh, project here, Flappy NMage. It will just be building online here. Yeah. Let me zoom in if I forget. So we'll do that. Now, before we get started, I think I did a couple of things. So obviously the engine is not complete, you know, um, our camera is still not there. We still don't have an entity system, so on. But that's one of the reasons I want to use it a little bit just to maybe explore some ways of doing this, like how would we want to set up our entities and then um, maybe even move that from the game into the engine. But let's see, um, that's something we'll, I guess we'll, uh, we'll find out. Now, before that, I do want to check out um, if we have things since last time. So day 15, <clears throat> yeah, I just added something small to the uh, to our game. Where is the game? Okay, so <clears throat> our game is this interface. And before, I think we had an init. And then, you know, the frame start, update, and so on. What I added is now a start, a start call. And the reason is um, sometimes, and in this case specifically for I'm GUI, you do want to do some setup before you um, you run your first um, kind of rendered frame, um, and that you can do in it. So, for example, some things in I'm GUI do not you're not allowed to do them while I'm GUI is, act is active. So in I'm GUI, to run it, um, we start a GUI frame and then we render, right? So we have a UI, so an I'm GUI frame start, and then I'm GUI render, and then, um, you know, this repeats. Now, there are some things that you cannot do within a frame start. That's just not allowed. And so if you want to do some setup, well, um, you have to do it in, in, in it. Somewhere before, so no matter where you do, if you do it even frame start, well, frame start does allow you to run GUI commands, so you cannot do that setup. So you cannot maybe change the font. You cannot do that in frame start. So we need somewhere where that's doable. And for now, um, I put that in start. 
I put an init and a star. So init, there is no like GUI allowed, but you can do some setup like um, changing a font, for example. In start itself, um, you actually have I am GUI, but start is only called once. So maybe you want to do some setup um, for your game that only happens once, load some resources. You can do that in start or in it up to you. Um, and there we go. Now, obviously, this is not final, but I found it useful to have um, to have two different kind of stages for the game. Okay. Um, that's about it. Now, what I want to do is essentially start uh, set up an image here and then start to to use it. Now, to do this, I'm just going to also follow our image docs. That kind of also gives us an idea. It's good enough. So let's see. Now I do need a flappy. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So go mode in it, and we'll say flappy dash enemy. Okay. Now go mode. Uh, or actually go get GitHub image. We'll just get latest. <clears throat> um, we we'll also need to get, so we need to get these uh, DLLs. So lib, so asm DLL, and I think SDL is already there in the path. So no need, so we just need this guy. Okay, awesome. There we go. Cool. Now, um, we do need a game. So let's make a game struct. And for now, I'll just implement kind of the interface. So we'll say, you know, var um, image uh, engine dot game, right? Equals. And perhaps I'll just cut off. <clears throat> now this will fail because it's complaining. Oh, you don't have all the all the things that are needed. So we need all of these to be implemented while we right. So let's get <clears throat> so G game. That's one. Um, this guy as well, and then all of these. There we go. And these two. <clears throat> so these are the ones we need. This is all engine dot uh, image. I'm GUI. Yes. Image I am GUI. There we go. Should run. So now a few simple things. Should run is a bool. Return. Um, yeah, let's just return uh, g dot should run. Um, so we need to keep a reference to the window. window and um, we need an image and we in right so in here uh, window and we return g dot image that's that's the setup we need I'm going to just get the main function up there and um, that's it. All right. Now, <clears throat> now we do need. Unfortunately, the docs are missing the actual setup, but we do have our main function. So we do have this. <laughs> so in main, or is main, or is main? There we go. So we just need init. Then we create a window. 
and that's what it and then we end it on cool let's do that copy all this <clears throat> in here um let's just do panic um Render uh and BDGL. window 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 all right and v sync no thank you and I can that's about the setup we need honestly so g is the game should run true um window is just our window i am going info is i think engine no um new yeah, i'm good right that's it that's it and then we do engine dot run g um yeah it needs to be applied so that's all the setup we need <clears throat> now we should see um a window can this be called in the current context yeah okay so let's do um window dot set title Paper. So now if we run, assuming we didn't break anything, we should just see. <clears throat> I don't know what to do. Come on. Compiles are usually faster, like a second. I'm not sure. What we see, I guess. So this is very important to do, and we'll need to do it every now and then to make sure that the engine is usable now we are not seeing kind of the internal view um instead this is how someone using the engine um, will look like like that's their experience you know this much code is not that much it's not that bad i would like to maybe simplify the interface i guess we'll see why is thing this long no idea is it the c compiler dying not sure all right while this is doing its thing <clears throat> we need some 3d models so flappy bird let's make sure everyone knows what flappy bird is this is game i got really popular some years ago and you essentially you're this bird and you tap to jump and if you don't jump you just fall and the goal is to say infinite game with a score and you need to pass as many as you can essentially you just keep going forward these pipes come in and you have to not touch them uh, and every time you pass one you get a score so we'll attempt to build something i guess um oh right so let's get the resource folder from image page resources lappy so resources has models need um shaders yeah um we'll edit them some textures for now nice so this builds quickly we have a window so it's flavor word oh good doesn't click close uh, isn't the internal engine handling this that's weird um, and right so <laughs> we need to handle this All right so let's just clean this up start using it in it all right so in updates where we put our logic we can say if input dot uh, key clicked 
SDL dots um not really I mean escape should close that's one thing I want so yes you should run was false but <clears throat> did we completely forget this it makes sense or did we break it recently but essentially we get um this now right mm. okay let's run image <clears throat> so this works um quitting oh is quick all right completely forget about that so if we have escape clicked or um if input dot is quick clicked oops not this one wrong game yes <clears throat> There we go. Cool. Now um, we need some models, so we'll want a pipe. I'm just going to do everything 3D now. Obviously, you can simulate this with uh, 2D look with 3D objects. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we can get along just a cube and um, texture. That's it. Yes, that's enough. And cubes we have. Uh, five texture. Mm, let's see. Yeah. All right, let's get Mr. Blender. <clears throat> Okay, delete, delete. We'll keep the default cube. Um, now, I want to take the face. Mm. Actually, I'll keep it default size. And I think we'll stretch it um, in game. Yeah. So maybe let's just texture it. And that's kind of the textured look. This <clears throat> now uh, uh, material and maybe the texture. The thing maybe. Mm. Let's see. And this, yeah, this is the ground is another one we need. Okay, let's get all the resources. Mm. Yeah, something like this. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, it's all in one. Ugh. I don't want to cut it myself. Thank you very much.
Can we really not get um okay it's equal size? Ugh, that's so tiny. Can build again with this. Hmm. Well, at the very least we can get this levy bird. Okay. Cool. So we have this. Let's save it. Save, save as. Um, so let's go to resources. Let's call this textures. We call the bird. Bird the PNG. Cool. Okay, we need the pipe. Okay, looks good enough. And pipe dot png pipe. Now let's see. So now I have this and I want to come in base color and where is the hmm I always forget how to do this. Nope. Not here. Break texture. Uh, not really. Texture paint. And maybe. Anything. Okay. Well, I completely forgot how to do textures where. Ah, there we go. New image and think open. Yeah. I'm going to go to dev. And let's say we want the pipe. There we go. <clears throat> So I say pipe texture and um, okay, source single image, yes, mapping, and ugh, that's bad. Mm, beats. Oh, uh, clip. Why is it not repeating the bottom part? That's weird. This makes no sense. Um, crop. Okay, let's just keep it repeat now. And now, where do we set this? and Vertex paint, no textures. We did it last time. <laughs> no, I completely forgot. Um, 
Okay, that's the image. Yes. Missing textures. Yeah, I'm trying to add it. So, okay, so we have this. Well, we're sitting this, and then I think the material seems to be applied, but I don't get. Ah. Oh, I mean, is it image texture? Is that it? Is that it? Image texture. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, finally, we have our texture. Uh, let's see. So I want all of it to come out on kind of the front face. We might need to go to the UV editor and there is change the UV's flat box no Yeah, that's <laughs> that's kind of bad. We don't want this. <clears throat> so I, I don't remember exactly. How do you let's see? Okay. So on one, uh, I do want like the object mode, just want to see it. And the other one, what we want is to see the UV editor, and we want to say, well. Show me this pipe. No, UV edit. Okay. All right, finally. So, so these are our UVs. We have to match them. So, if we want one one face, kind of to have all of it, maybe we'll get this node to be all the way here. And. Um, The rest of them are broken, but at least one side. I think we can put everything, um, make all the sides valid like this. Oops. There we go. There we go. Now we take all of these, move them to 
the edges. You guys come down. And you come here. Okay. Now all the sides should show. Or some of them. I think I flipped some, but that's okay. That is okay. All right. So we have this, so essentially probably just stretch it in the game like this which would look ugly but you know it's something we can do this if it's long if it's short be. okay now let's take this guy export to i think fbx is good um so let's go to lappy resources models delete all of these and we say just pipe. There we go. So we have our pipe. Um, we'll essentially do the same, but for um, what is this for the bird? There we go. We have our Mr. Bird looking good. Again, exports FBX. We we'll call it um, bird. <clears throat> Let's start with this. And I take it. Okay. So back to the code. <clears throat> I think on init, let's load. Um, let's see. So what do we want? We want our models. Model. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> Meshes dot new mesh. So one is the bird and is kind of resources models bird x. This guy is just like, uh, I don't really care about anything. So bird mesh. And um, belt load mesh. And let's do the same pipe mesh. So pipe. Okay. <clears throat> um, now let's load the textures. Textures, come on. Let me hear. I think it's textures. Yes. Um, assets, right. That's why you need docs. Assets dot um, load maybe load PNG. Now meshes should move to assets, but that's for another day, I guess. Textures, so we'll get the bird texture. Vertex error fail to load texture and. Um, the same thing for the pipe. Pipe. Um, let's move this guy right here. Then we can say, you know, bird mesh dot on the. Where do we? Is it on the material? All right. So then we need um, material. So we just use <clears throat> simple. Simple one we had before. We might change it. Maybe we don't want colors. Uh, lights. I guess not. So let's just do this. And we'll just sample the texture. So the texture color will be as is. Um, no vertex coloring and no lights. Okay. 
So we'll take it as a text. Um, no this, no this. Fragment, UP is not, I'm not sure, but nothing else is used. Um, this is fine. Okay, now we can do materials dot new material. Um, you know, simple, simple math, I guess. Taylor path resources um, slash shaders. Uh, do we remove this material? Yeah, we do. Not time, do we? But simple. So we just say simple. Now we get um, simple math error and same thing. Fail to load material. There we go. Now. Simple material dot um, what is wrong? You don't do an error? Do you panic? Yes, you panic. Okay, good for us. So set uh, texture. Oh, okay, there you go. If you use texture equals. Um, Mm. So we set them later uh, because we'll have two. And I think up here. So we'll have our simple uh, material, which is just materials of material. And we'll have, um, let's see, pipe texture, which is assets to texture. Red texture, yes, as well as again, the texture. And then we'll have models. So, bird model is shape of mesh and um, pipe. Now, this is what usually, you know, your if you're if you have a, a visual editor, that's what the visual editor is doing it's loading all our things, keeping track of them, so on. In this case, we're doing it manually since we don't have an it. So in here, uh, let's see. So var error bird. Uh, So we load this, we load this, we load this, and we load this. And these guys say we are not pointers, that's fine. There we go. Um, that's that. Now, if we run, we're just loading. Should be good. Okay. Everything is fine, <clears throat> no crashes. Um, okay, now in our render loop, we do need a renderer. So where are we here? We're giving a renderer. So we can say g dot row um, Render a draw. <clears throat> so I think what happens here is the pipes move right to left, and the uh, the bird just moves up and down. It doesn't move left and right. Just the pipes move right to left, and then they kind of uh, disappear. So they appear beyond the screen on the right, and then they move to the left. Now. If we want to draw, let's say, the bird, where the bird is. So at this point, a bunch of things. Let's do it now, and we'll change them later. 
but we'll start to notice that like the bird has its mesh, its texture, now we need a position. Um, position. I mean, yeah, uh, or just for now say bird mat, I guess, maybe. A new translation matrix. There we go. Same thing here. It's a pipe matrix. Um, so we say the guy is in kind of in the middle. Um, actually, a bird matrix. And material is just simple math. Now, we probably want to say that simple material of texture equals bird uh, texture. <laughs> bird texture, and that's it, maybe. Maybe. So we have this. We don't see anything yet um, because we do need to set, at the very least, the <clears throat> these things. So the model matrix, the view matrix, projection matrix, um, which is where it would be helpful to have our camera class, <laughs> but we don't have that yet. But that's fine. So camera position, camera forward. So we'll do model matrix is this, yeah. So we need to set to where this guy is. Right, camera position. Where is it used? Okay, update view matrix. So let's take this guy. We won't really move in this case, but um, load load assets, and then you know set up camera. So our camera will always be um, kind of in the middle. So cam position is put back. Um, let's see, new vec three. Zero, zero, maybe 10 or minus 10, right? So it's looking, we want to look at the center, it's a bit far away. We want to look at the center and then the camera forward is just this. So that's our camera forward. There we go. And then we get our view matrix. Um, a target is always the center of the screen, so we say new break three and just zero the whole. Um, we don't need this one, okay? Sure, and then projection matrix. There we go. <clears throat> so we have this, let's see, so that's the view matrix set. Um, and then that's the projection matrix set, and the model matrix will be set, I think, by draw. So let's, um, we need to check the renderer. Renderer, renderer 3D. So yes, it does. So we're setting it every single time. So that's, that's okay. Let's see. Not yet, not yet, okay. Um, oh, we do need, this thing is not enough. We do need um, to set the texture. So where is this guy? So we have um, 
this diffuse texture so we need to set this so who is setting this guy oh no one we have a load uh, simple material set attributes that's a good api so we might want to change it so i think this is really good we're going through this and seeing what is a bit confusing about the process um what can be simplified so on even the apis okay so setup gamma setup textures so simple math dot set attribute and the buffer object is like the bird um bird mesh for example and this guy just comes in and sets <clears throat> yeah sets them in order okay so this this actually needs to be done when we draw so if we're drawing um like draw the bird right and then when we draw the pipe that will be something else <clears throat> we'll need to set not the bird mesh but the uh, the pipe mesh yes here we have only one thing and doesn't like one object that object never changes so it's enough to do it um, up front so we set this guy yeah and then we have all these things cool can we get an image now Maybe. Ooh, we do. Kind of weird. What are we looking at? Um, I think we're looking at the side like this, kind of. Yeah. I think so. All right. Now, in this case, let's... In init... Um, let's uh you know set positions so the so the bird mat um let's see so bird material dot rotate and let's rotate it by like 90 degrees um let's see degrees to radians and then any axis really but let's do new vec3 so let's rotate over the y-axis let's see Oh, nice. So we have this guy. We don't have blending. Um, I think that's why. No, it's just that's our default. It's just white. Yeah. Okay. So that's our bird. We have a drawing. Let's draw. Um, Kind of let's set it back as well. So birdman.translate. Let's move it um, maybe five units to the left and let's scale it by so new vec three. So let's scale by it's too big. So so like we scale by half on all axes. Oh, not here. Nice. Um, so we see the side of the cube because this is not a um, perspective matrix. Sorry, it's not. Um, what do you call the other thing? It is a projection uh, as perspective matrix, but we don't want that. Um, we want the other one. I forgot. Got the name. So uh, perspective matrix 
this is orthographic right so or the orthographic <coughs> orthographic projection we just look look straight ahead which is what we want for a 2d game um do we have that in ggr oh we do nice so let's take that instead of using this I start to make a proper um, ortho matrix. <clears throat> Don't remember what these units mean. Left and right and top and bottom. Well, I don't know. Let's say 10, 10. bottom is minus 10 and then the near clip are these why are you sad <clears throat> okay Nice. So we don't see the side anymore. We just see it kind of in the front. Um, we can scale it up again. This looks weird. Uh, let's say we don't scale. Let's just see. What happens? There we go. Mm, it's a bit too wide. Too wide. Um, so maybe scale it only on the x-axis by like 25 percent oh disappeared all right so i want to keep the other axis for some reason compilation has slowed down but we haven't done anything fundamentally different so. well okay we have mr flavi bird cool guy we can see him um now now we draw the bird um same thing we can draw a pipe it's a single one so we can say um let's see so the diffuse texture now becomes pipe texture the pipe material and the pipe mesh and everything and this should draw it in the center, I believe. There we go. Um, we do need to rotate as well. So set positions. Um, uh, scale. Scale will play with it. Um, rotate translates yeah scale is probably like the same on this side and it's like it's double it the y-axis wait wait what happened scale. oh okay on the bird Not the bird, not the bird, not the bird. Um, set, uh, where is the place where we set attributes? Pipe mesh, there we go. Mm, why are we drawing the same thing twice? Pipe, pipe, uh, pipe, pipe, pipe. Well, the position, so we keep, we won't translate the pipe. Um, but otherwise, should be okay. And set attribute. Could be doing. 
Um, yeah. In the array pointer, where are we setting the fuse texture? Um, because we're looping over. <coughs> Okay, so we get this. Um, now we set this guy. At least the positions will be different now. <clears throat> okay, and this guy is is like double the height, um, but has the wrong texture, which is fixable. Mm. So our thing is called, not here, diffuse, that's it, Bob. Okay, so on bind, we bind the texture. Okay. But are we not setting it? Here. Um, pipe and burnt. Pipe texture. Oh, right. So I guess we have a bug in here, um, which is that for efficiency, we were like not binding again <clears throat> when we're drawing something. Um, if we already have the same thing, but in this case, the material did change, but we are only checking against the mesh. If any thing like in this case our bind will be affected so our bind will bind the textures now if the texture changed between the runs we need to rebind so in this case we can hack it simple mad to bind and we can add <clears throat> um, bugs so one thing we need to do is we need to say Um, what do you call it? In here, so we need to rebind. We need to rebind the texture. If the texture changes, texture or any material values change between render code. Right. Um, but this should give us now a proper proper thing cool not cool yeah still a bird um bind 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 and this guy shouldn't matter bound mans because we're binding it ourselves um Yeah, I mean, so let's do a mesh, uh, pipe mesh dot bind, and then submit material bind. All oh, right, we need to bind after after we do this. Um, this we don't need. This will be caught, but this will not be. Caught. Change set and then all of these. Um, probably, I guess.
awesome finally so we have these um now a background would be nice but let's just get some functionality in so what we want to do is we want to be able to have multiple um Well, we need a bunch of things. So we need to be able to easily make multiple uh, pipes just by essentially changing the position and then drawing again. And then we'll need to um, have gravity and track if we touch something, right? So to keep it short, probably won't finish today, but you know, we'll start. So um, we will need to track where each pipe is and and then move them every frame so every update will keep kind of um track of all these pipes so let's do to do this easily mm. yeah let's make let's make a new file let's do not to clutter things so pipe.go package main um so we we'll, we we'll call the pipe. So what does the pipe have? It has a position. Um, we we'll just call it translation matrix. We'll just mat. Probably you do want to have these things separate, but yeah, no, it's okay. Like you want your position. Um, scale rotation and actually separate vectors and then you combine them only when something changes but for now it's okay um for now like this is fine this is okay okay so we need a mat do we need anything else i don't think um maybe we say like fun new pipe we just returns a pipe and uh, maybe we say like is it a top pipe or a bottom pipe um and what that we do is we return a pipe I don't think now we, we need to include any of the actual mesh or so information because they're all the same. We're just drawing them differently. So this guy is like a new um, uh, we we'll just rotate by default. So um, 90 gm dot degrees to radians around new vec3 around the y-axis and we have x so <clears throat> so we need a bunch of pipes pipes is just an, a bunch of pipes right So on init or just start, we leave init for kind of resources and all these things. Pipe mat we won't need anymore. Not really. In here, um, let's make like five pipes by default. Let's see. Pipe um, append. New pipe. This top. Mm. I mean, we double them then. So if we want five pairs, then we want ten pipes. And the even one is like false. Um, what's wrong? So the even one is at the bottom and the odd one is at the top. And then when we draw, um, we're going to loop for all the pipes. 
we'll have all these things once and then we will do this this one be there uh this we just rename it to station matrix instead we'll be taking it from essentially the pipes pipes i dots translation matrix and um <clears throat> maybe we can take um position uh victory so rotate and exo translate by position <clears throat> Um, suppose is new back three. So let's start them at so our character is minus 10. Let's start them at like maybe four on the x and they'll keep going away. Actually, just zero because they are not minus 10. Um, Yeah. Position. Although. Mm, yeah, actually, I, I leave this because we, we do need like how, how big is it? Um, how high is it? That gameplay logic, I don't want to put it here. So I just say top and bottom and then We'll do this. Uh, we'll do this here. We say top pipe. Or just P. So we got a pipe. We want to translate by by position. Um, rotation should be okay and we want to say this is the top pipe so we need a scale for it well for now we'll say um, new back three so position the text Y, that's the thing we want to change. Um, that will be a bit high up, at least for now. So I put it like this. And then I think that's it. And for the other one, <clears throat> the same X position, but we'll do like minus five. Oops, P and then position um, dot set X. So um, let's do a separation of three units. And let's see how this looks. Okay. Um, we did set the rotations correctly, as we didn't do. But yeah, so we have a good correct number of pipes. Cool. <clears throat> mm, the function should have given us. All right. So if it's stop. So this is giving us um, so that the bottom it should point top. Otherwise, please rotate by um, ninety degrees. Let's see if this helps. Not right. 
А, да, да, да. You can do two rotations, maybe. So by 90 degrees to have it look up, and then by 180 degrees on the Z axis. But now we have two rotations on top of each other. I hope it doesn't explode. Mm, that didn't help. No, no, no. Okay. Let's just keep. Um, let's just do this. What do we get? Okay, so we get this. Wait, something is wrong. Why are we... It's top. Stop true. Okay, we'll change it a bit. So... Um, yeah. Because we don't know which, uh, which axis kind of up this. Mm, almost. Mm. Um, maybe we don't do it this way. Maybe we do like three. Three components, then we combine. So like a new rotation matrix from quaternion. X let's set uh yeah. all right so let's do this so we'll do translation matrix we'll just do identity and uh that's our position or rotation or scale and our rotation is new rotation matrix A new okay so how do you want to rot rotate well let's say we want to rotate by just to keep it like before so maybe 90 here and 0 here um, and then scale is one 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 new scale matrix a new vec three zero zero um actually um and now our final matrix is new tr mat What do we have? Mm, I would like a way to create this out of these three because this is not nice. Look at um. Yeah. 
Mm, I mean, yeah, we can just multiply the... Multiply them. Maybe. Uh, kind of forgot the math. Anyway, we can um, we can use this. Get the default one, and then we can say rotate. I mean, radians. Well, hopefully we can. From the quaternion, um, I think we can get the angle. In radians and u dot axis let's see sure <clears throat> Okay, this is weird. Um, do you think it's scaling? Or I haven't. So it's 90 and ninety degrees around in radians, ooh, right. That's one thing, one mistake. 90 degrees around the y axis. Yep. Okay, so now that we have this, just like before, but we have an independent kind of rotation that we can use. Um, what we can do. is if it's the top we don't need anything um, but otherwise what we want to do is q dot we want to rotate a bit more um, let's see so we have our rotation a bit of an easier way we have this and now if it's a bottom one bottom pipe so we can say q is equal to this kind of rotation otherwise we are going to rotate by 90 on the y and then 90 on the z and i believe this should give us one that points now so GGLM, I think, needs a bit of work. Uh, no, not 90, 180. The interface for TRMAT can be improved. Yeah. Cool, finally. <laughs> finally, very slow, but we're getting there. Um, so I want to now essentially move these and also stretch them. So let's see. Um, hmm. so every tech that's one thing we want to do on update we're going to move everyone a little bit to the left just to have things moving so we can say um, for all our pipes um we want to translate and we'll just move by maybe we'll have like a speed five speed which is i don't know dot two and for now let's just say 1.0 okay so Mm. 
Mm. I mean, this itself can be made into new break three. So please translate by uh, pipe speed. And now, here we can copy it, take a copy, and I want to scale it by time the delta time, right? By timing the dt. I hope this is not too fast. Shouldn't be. One a second. One one meter a second. Oof. That's fast. That actually is fast. Um interesting. Um one meter should be a second now. So take the speed um, minus one. Yeah, and you just translate by this amount. Now we render and well, one thing we can do is where's the vsync? Let's enable vsync just to limit the frame rate and see if if that makes a difference <clears throat> yeah the speed was too much um okay so we have this we have n pairs and that's that should be it that's that so it seems as if this guy is moving he's not actually moving they are the ones moving um okay so with delta time multiplication it shouldn't it should still be per second so i'm not sure um why Well, let's do this um, so window dot you know set title and let's just set it to Happy <clears throat> That's a tiny amount. Um, wait, was it just a thousand? What? What? Uh, do we have a bug in Delta Time? Oh, right. So sometimes delta time is so fast that this guy, um, the delta time is zero. It's so small that delta time is zero, and obviously we cannot return a delta time of zero, so we wanted to make it a microsecond. Um, but that gave us a thousand, obviously. Yeah, so that's another bug. That is another one. Indeed. Um, so let's go here and we say plugs delta time um, handling for when it is zero is wrong. Gives 1000 dt. Okay. 
Um, so to fix this for now, let's go and just make enable vsync, limit the frame rate, and hopefully it doesn't let this happen. Okay. Um, another thing we want to do, so we want every update, we want to move the pipes. And we want to move the birds. So, um, uh, bird vector. I'll just say move. Velocity is, let's make a new vector. So by default, it's like gravity. We have some downward uh, speed. Um, I mean, DT and gravity, gravity. So gravity and gravity is minus nine point eight. Why are you sad? Okay. Um, now, if um, the space bar is clicked, key clicked, K underscore space. So we want to say that the velocity um, set y, right, is uh, the velocity dot y plus jump force. And jump force um, is 32, which is, I don't know, let's say 15, just to make sure we negate gravity. Um, That's not actual physics. Um, you probably want to calculate with like f equals ma, MA and then convert that to velocity and so on. But for now, we just work with units, I guess. That's fine. Um, so jump force, even these units are too big. We'll just negate. Uh, <clears throat> so gravity is maybe uh, minus one. And we'll need a so we need a, a like a bird velocity because we need to keep track, make it faster as it falls down and so on. So bird velocity um, is this with everything zeroed out, and gravity is going to add let's say one unit every time, and jump force is. Um, is gravity plus some arm, so maybe three units. So every time um, we won't do this, so bird uh, velocity dot, you know, set y. Bird velocity dot y minus minus gravity. Right. But if we click, then we're going to set it to minus this. Um, no, we're just going to set it to jumpers directly. Ignore gravity. Um, maybe, I guess. Not dealing with actual like uh, a physics thing it will make it really bad. I think this is just too small. So this let's say starts with zero and minus uh, gravity into delta time. So it's minusing some very small amounts. 
Yeah. Okay, now we need to move. So So we need to rebuild the like uh, because we're using the um, translation matrix, and now we need to update it with the new value. So we need to translate with this amount. Maybe we can just do translate, honestly. Mm, not sure. Sure. Yeah, I mean, at the end, we can just say uh, bird tier mat, the translate, and we'll translate by bird velocity. That should do it. Oh, <laughs> it's going the wrong direction. Um, I'm not clicking, so why are you going in the wrong direction? Minus gravity. Oh, because gravity is already um, negative, so I'm basically adding. Well, there you go. But you can see it sped up. It wasn't just, yeah, it speeds up and. Mm. Let us take you down. Just one now. Because the force I'm putting might be too small. Yeah, it's way too small. So I'm holding it and it's only it's moving three units a second. And we instead we want like a jump to maintain our and the fall is kind of too fast as well. Okay. So let's see. So the falls too fast, and this guy, so this guy is going to be 10, and it should be an impulse, so it's not per second, it should just be set, and um, gravity should be like maybe 5, and this guy should not multiply by this, it's just an impulse, and it should be like key, click the game. Oof, that went way up. I should be falling. Thanks. So. Oh, there we go. Oh my god. Completely flying. Okay, just to make sure, let's say print line jumped and jump force is obviously very big. Let's make it one. I want to make sure we're not registering multiple clicks. Okay, one click. Then gravity is to um, so we want to jump. We, we want to move by the jump force, but then gravity takes a long time to reset it. Instead, what, what the game is more like is that you jump some set amount and then you immediately stop. Um, so I think what we want here is to say something like, um, if we jumped last frame, so let's try this. So we want to undo kind of the effect of that. So, uh, jump last frame is false if we do jump we'll say jump last frame is true and <clears throat> this guy is additive um, jumping is not so what we want to say is if jump last frame We want to uh, 
subtract essentially the jump force. We want to just remove that. Pause. And then you might jump again here and so on and so on. Okay. okay. It's too hard, way too hard. So maybe we'll keep it for more than one frame. Um, or just increase the jump force now. Three, maybe even four. Now it's feeling a bit more um, like the physics in the actual game. Yeah. It's a bit too instant, so we don't have animation. Yeah. Yep. Mm, is there a better way? So like if we're moving up, maybe we want to have a lot of drag, additional, uh, so we want to increase gravity as, as long as you're going up and otherwise um, we remove it. So perhaps we can say, yeah, up drag maybe, um, and drag is like, one so over three frames we kind of stop you from going up um and so we say if we won't need this anymore actually third velocity if our velocity dot y is bigger than zero then we want to subtract the drag amount which would just be this we won't need we don't need, we don't need. Okay, so if it's bigger than zero, then we're applying a drag to slow it down. Um, so you come to a stop quickly. So in this case, if our speed is three, then around three, if you don't click in, in around three frames, you're going to stop and then gravity just acts normally. That should do it. Yes, much, much better. Too jumpy. Um, needs to be smaller, so maybe drag goes to like 0.8, jump force is like 2. Then we need to start stretching, like positioning the. Uh, okay, too weak. Too weak. Um, oh wow, what happened here? <clears throat> Thing is, um, if this is really velocity, then you shouldn't translate like this all at once, but instead move little by little. Um, let's see, actually. So there is a formula. Velocity to position. I don't want the video. You can calculate the rate of change, um, like how much you should move. So that's our velocity, which is by acceleration, sure. So we have this, so that's how much we want to move. And then position is um, the old position plus the velocity into, uh, into time. Yeah, so I guess we don't move by this, but instead um, position delta We need to to scale by um, delta time. There are any multiplying here. Mm. 
I'm gonna show this time. It's been a while since I did these things. Um, Way too slow. Okay. Uh, I mean, to be really accurate, we need to implement like the acceleration, which is our gravity, um, into time. So that's the change in velocity. It's current kind of velocity plus gravity into time. So that's that's good. Um, this guy actually needs this is all changing velocity um jump force we just set airport velocity and that's that um, and then to get this um we add we translate by velocity into delta time but everything needs to be more um this is four yeah it's speeding up yeah so you can see now it's moving smoothly doesn't kind of snap to the position it actually moves because we are applying the change in position over many frames but so the gravity is very weak and the jump force is very weak and that's something we can fix so the gravity let's make it just kind of the actual thing and jump force just make it like you know it's better but still needs to be snappy it's too so let's up the bag make it one and um make this five make this twenty um Maybe instead of up drag, um, we'll just reduce it by some point. I think that's the more usual way is we say, well, you know, we have a drag of 10%. So every frame we are killing the velocity by 10%. Yeah. This this snappy feeling is is what the game is like there. There we go. Okay, so this is one better than some drag. Well, uh, drag drag amount. So we'll say like um, it stopped pretty good. Jump force needs to be more. And gravity definitely needs to be higher. Um, right. So we have some upward drag, but not downward. Downward, and then um, we have gravity being applied. <clears throat> um, and then the actual position change.
Yes. It's very close to what you'd see in a normal live yard game. Okay. Um, now, what if we scale up all the pipes by a large amounts? Do they scale up around the center? I'm not sure. I am not sure. Um, hmm. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So start. So scale by, the thing is scaling can destroy the, the rotation. Because they're combined in the translation matrix and that's why you usually have your game objects as um, different vectors and then you combine them. <clears throat> Hmm. Um, let's see for now. Too bad. We'll do it. Um, so let's scale by like four times on the Y for everyone. Or just for the top ones. Let's see. Hey, this looks nice. So they are scaling on the upwards. That's good. That's what we want. I think they are scaling up on the upwards. Let's do um, by 10. No, they are actually scaling down. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Mm, okay. Now, let's say we scale everyone like this. We we move them way higher. So so everyone has enough scale to maybe cover the whole screen more or less. So these guys are like ten. These guys like guys are ten, and then let's move them further apart. And then we'll never touch the scale again. We'll just be moving them up and down relative to each other. But they'll always be outside the screen. Yeah. So now, how how much gap now they are exactly touching? How much gap do we want uh, to have? And that's kind of this. So um, Let's see. So let's say we want a gap of five. So we'll move down part. Now, uh, we don't have kind of generation. So when they go outside, they have to come in from the right side, and then we have to position them. Mm. Mm. Yeah, let's offset everyone by like, um, 10 to the right, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Um, let's make them 10. So I think 10 is after the screen. Maybe. Yeah. It's just outside the screen. So let's do 12. And then every time we kind of move the pipes. So you can move all of them. But then we can say, well, uh, we can move two at a time. We can say if, if 
a given pipe. Mm, that's the annoying part of doing it like this. Translation matrix. Well, so we reached the limit of this. We, we need a more proper um, position because this guy doesn't give us position. Not easily anyway. So we want to also have... This is not a good way of doing it, but let's do. So many times you will have both if you have a game object. Um, like imagine a transform component. So let's say transform component. So you have a position, a vector, you'll have a scale, and you will have a ro rotation, right? That will be a quaternion. And you will also have this translation matrix. What you will use day to day is this, but you will have something like is dirty. Uh -huh. Now, if you don't change, if you change anything, then this gets recalculated with all the new values. Otherwise, the old one is reused. Um, and this is what we want to do. That like. Um, if we want to put them properly, but for the sake of speed, just for now, we'll do is my position, and we'll just kind of set the position. Um, along with this, so whenever we say the translate, we can also translate the uh, position. Add. Right. And then same thing here. So dot position uh, dot add. Dot add dot add. Right. So we move them last step. So let's move both. But add and that's now the two should match the position in both of them um, should match and now we can check if the position dot y um, so let's say x position if the x position is bigger than, so it starts on the right side which is like 12 and then it moves back so if the position is let's say bigger than 10 and x position is more than 12 that's kind of our game loop that's where we update the loop so uh five logic right so it's between this and this, um, then our pipe, we can say, you know, maybe we'll know if um, we should reposition uh, position or should should regen maybe like this so should regen is true now if it's between this and this so it's moved a little bit then we say um, so um, we can say if uh, we should not regen then we can continue and if they got in this case so i want to kind of move them around maybe put them up put them down something like this and so by the time the player sees them they have already been repositioned um and then once they go outside the screen we can reset reset their positions for now let's just try to position them um, so we are doing plus two so we are handling one pair at a time um, so if it shouldn't be regent um, if it's more than 10 
four. Um, we got a 12, just continue, just so we don't nest too much. All right. So we want the gap between them to always be the same. Um, so let's say we start them at a gap of five units. And then all we have to do is move them together up and down. And that's it. So right now, um, if we run, if we run, oh wow, invalid memory, break three, let go, okay, it's an hour dot add, dot add, dot add, new break three. Um, oh, dot position, dot position has never been set. Mm, um. Right. So they are exactly touching. So we 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 can start them off with some distance. Um. On the Y. So this guy's like maybe. So if this is two. And this is two, so they have a distance of um, four between them. The opening. Come on. Yeah. Maybe even a bit too small. Starting is ugly, but um, yeah. So it is too small. We do want more. So maybe 14, 14. Mm. Now all we have to do is just kind of play with the positioning. So I want to say i dot position dot set x, uh, no, set y. Um, and kind of, now we need a random. Find x, we need uh, run dot. What random stuff do we have? <clears throat> what does this give us? Between zero and one, not one non, not inclusive. Okay, so we want this and we want that, like, if we start centered, we either move maximum of maybe four up, four down. Um, but I want a number between and the negative as well. I guess we can just subtract um, 0.5. Do they have more convenient functions? Um, let's see. Let's see, random. Well, that's fine. So we can get um, int n. No. Can I get. So let's say is up um, or just move up and maybe move down. So should we move it down or not? So we can get a random number and we'll move it down if the number is bigger than 0 0.5. Right? Since this is more or less between 0 and 1, so it's more than 0 0.5, um, we multiply. Then we get this guy multiplied by, let's say we want to move a maximum of 5 units. And then we say if move down, then around x, we multiply by minus 1 to shift it down instead. So if we are going to move 2 units up, um, then we'll, we'll move them down instead. And then we'll just say, we'll just set um, dot y plus rand y, not rand x. And we'll do this for both this guy and the next. 
so the, the pair moves together. Either they move up or they move down. Um, that's about it, I believe. Well, we do need to reset, actually. Because they start centered, and then when they loop back, what we'll do on the, on the loop back we'll that later. But let's see, at least have this. See if it works. No, it did not work. Um, all right, we did not move the the matrix. Not should region. Um, so one thing is should region. Should region is false now. Um, we get rand y move down. There we go. And <clears throat> pipes i dot translation matrix dot translates. New break three, um, zero. We want to translate right this amount and zero. So please translate here and translate the pair as well. If you want. We don't need to add or anything because translate or ID just doesn't add the current value. Nice. So you can see these two, um, the top one got shifted down and the bottom one got shifted down as well. This one is up and so on. Um, we do need to control the spacing between them because at this rate <laughs> we cannot win. We always crash. Yeah. But it's starting to be somewhere. So let's control the spacing. The spacing is controlled by uh, this thing so pipe uh, x spacing is which is a floor 32 is maybe mm, six units All right I hope everyone gets the idea um, of how we essentially oh, so now they'll be further apart yep so there is enough distance maybe too too far maybe and we do want them to move faster this is definitely too slow you can even make them speed up as time goes so yeah so now you can definitely play and win <laughs> or lose yeah so we try not to touch nice very nice Okay. Now this looks very ugly because um, we are not actually having, we don't actually have uh, like 2D support. We do support 3D games. Now these textures look ugly. But otherwise, it's good. Now they don't look back. Oops, what happened here? Something happened. Um, well, to know one thing is where is the speed? Um, five speed minus five. Let's see now. I think there's something wrong with my computer today. It's too slow. Oh, there we go. Oh, gravity is too, it's too slow. Gravity is too weak. We need to make the gravity stronger, but otherwise, yep, there we go. Okay, so um, gravity, Mr. Gravity, is maybe double that. And the idea is now, 
is we need to kind of record the original positions so we need to know like the um, original po positions of this so when they when they cross on the other side we will move them back to where they started um, at least on the on the y-axis they'll they'll be centered on the screen um, and then we'll, we'll we'll move them again so when we shift it's always a shift around the center not around them shift. so we'll do original position um, so now this logic is for kind of pipes that are entering um, if not should regen so if it if it shouldn't regen let's get the this guy all, all the time so if it shouldn't regen and if x position is bigger than or actually smaller so if it went all the way to the left um, what would that be I think let's leave this for next time so we have something to do next time um, it's a start we still need collision uh, we need a bunch of things but you know I think it's nice um, might have been better to select a 3d game just to make things look better but I'll we'll see about next time maybe we'll prepare some nicer 3d models for this uh, let's add this let's push Day 16, um, working on Lovely Earth. Right, I think that's it. Thank you everyone for coming and see you next week.